Thank you. Uh, a, a pleasure to be here with all of you working on uh, critical issues. Um, my background is threefold in terms of working with social science research on cities, neighborhoods, first. Second, consulting with the U.S. Conference of Mayors, as senior policy advisor for many years with the city of Paris and the, for three years and city of Seoul for two years, which led to two of the books which were circulating around. We have, we have <coughs> uh, in turn, multiple methods. The general background for, for about 30 years has been working on cities and part of a project on urban innovation where we have lots of collaborators. We've done a lot of, the, a lot of these issues with a government, mostly local government focus. For, th for 12 years, we've been working on scenes. And so the scenes is now, is now up to about, about 10 books, um, <laughs> three in Chinese, which are not there. And, and the, the mostly, mostly English stuff is, is we're circulating around to, to, to give you a flavor. The scenescapes book, which is the black one there, is the most comprehensive in terms of uh, conceptualization. It's just coming out in Chinese this, this week. We had a two-day conference in Seoul last, um, sorry, in um, Beijing last, last week. With, we, have, we have five Chinese teams. So we learn, we learn from all of these collaborators and, and find particu particularly distinctive patterns as we move to different locations. So comparison is the is the beginning of, um, of science. <clears throat> okay, um, what does scenes add? We, 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 we have data which is especially in the black book for all U.S. zip codes. There are 45,000. We have in less, every variable is not available for every one, so the ends drop down to 25, 30, 30,000, depending on, on, on how, we, how we combine them. But the, these permit us to, the, to, to generate a distinct sense of place using 15 dimensions, which we'll, uh, I'll elaborate. Things like localism, neighborliness, transgression, egalitarianism. Second, we can link these kinds of scenes components to dynamic processes like real estate investment, consumer shopping, residential choice. And the new scenes measures work powerfully in many of the past models where we use the same variables, the same data that many others have. And we've deliberately chosen those same variables that others have used in order that they will um, see, see how, how scenes can add to what, what others have already done. Um, we have... Um, Retail, the, the one, of, I'd say, a somewhat original data uh, source I'll just mention, we can talk about these, as this has been a theme, a theme at this conference, is what's usually called county business patterns, as used by the, by the economists and others. However, the county business pattern data are available at the biz zip, the, the zip code level, but it's all unpublished, it's difficult to reformat and to analyze. So, it, so almost nobody has published using this. Some geographers, a few geographers, but almost no economists, no sociologists, no political scientists have, have, have used these data. We should. So there, 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 there are many options. I'm not suggesting any one, but interfacing these and depending on what you want, these, these can be very valuable. And they're certainly much better than just analyzing entire counties or larger units. Uh, these are very similar. The same basic patterns are used in England, France, uh, Japan, Korea, the same categories, they're called next codes, which were cited especially in the papers by with co-author with Luke Anseling yesterday. But those same codes are used in Japan and Korea and so forth. They have maybe the similar, similar, similar numbers, if not uh, exactly the same. Uh, <coughs> so these facilitate international research is, 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 the, is the background point. Um, general processes can be, can be modeled in a, in a big model, which is what we do, and then we try to often replicate that model and see how much it changes in different regions of the U.S. within different cities, like com contrasting New York, Chicago, and L.A., contrasting French cities or Paris or Parisian arrondissement with, with different areas within Seoul, etc. cetera. Uh, with collaborators, we, I mentioned we have, we have uh, books which were circulating around. Uh, <coughs> And um, much as on websites like Academia and YouTube, the, um, uh, the last general point is we, we don't seek to, seek to replace 
any other models that you and others are using. We don't want to say something's wrong. We want to add something new, add new ways of joining the pieces which, which we've discussed at this conference. For instance, many people have talked about some kinds of, what is retail up or down? Is there an apocalypse or not? But, and then and they'll say many things are going down. On the other hand, bars, restaurants, cafes, bakeries, many things are going up. Okay, we're trying to make some sense out of this. How do these things fit together in more general manner? All right, let me go through a bit of this. The, the general background we did, seven books on this, is the general idea of a new political culture, that the, the economy is moving toward a market individualism, social factors are leading to more tolerance, cultural pluralism is coming in. I'm not elaborating this much here, but just I'm, I'm framing it to say we, we, we thought a lot about this and we've got a lot of data. Um, and, and on cities, which you can compare, when, and then within the cities, some of the key factors with the rise of social issues in addition to the classic economic and fiscal issues. And so that in turn led us to the idea of scenes. Scenes we define in terms of neighborhoods, small geographic units, physical structures, people, combination of these act in the activities, and especially the values that people pursue in the scene. This we've not, for the most part, talked about at this conference, nor do most social scientists do this in a systematic way. But joining the values or culture with these other things is what I would say we try to do more explicitly in ways that you'll, you'll see us elaborate. So the, the key are 15 dimensions, which are down here. Whoops. The, these, these 15 we focus on a lot in the, in the scenes analysis and how and how self-expression changes in different locations and how, and how, how having more self-expression transforms retail activities. Okay, I, I will elaborate. Um, the the uh, one thing we do is to create a, a measure of if we have, uh, just to show a, a, a data, so, well, now let me go back. I'll, 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 I'll skip that for now, but the, the, the basic point is we create a measure. Where, where, do, where do these things come from, like localism or neighborliness? We code individual retail activities, such as tattoo parlor, such as Starbucks. And these then are, are coded in terms of the degree to which they're important for, for the 15 dimensions. And, and then and, um, the, we started with more traditional kinds of community, that, that is the background before this is the Chicago 1920s tradition, community areas, Hyde Park, Bridgeport, etc. We then go on to, to generalize a little more abstractly, and these, these are things that, are, that come out, say, that come out of the literature. Disney heaven, or say, Bobo, or Black is Beautiful. These, if you will, are, are labels for, for neighborhood, more general types. However, these have a Western European and American bias, I would say, to them. Are they, are they more meaningful? The labels come from the European. So what we did is just say, we want to compare with the whole world. We want to have more abstract concepts that can be used in Tanzania, Tanzania China, India, and so forth. So we develop these by reviewing histories of values, theory, you know, what do people want. And so we, we invented none of these, but we tried to can articulate their definition and then measure them in ways that people can use them in, in India to compare India or China with the other places. The other big thing which we came across, which is in the blue book <coughs> and informing for many others, was uh, related to, to, to Putnam. So Robert Putnam's book, Bowling Alone, made the argument that organizations are in decline, very similar to the theme of this conference. <coughs> If organizations are in decline, and Tuckville is right, that organizations and conversation are how we build trust and legitimacy, if this is in decline, this means we're going to have people who are angry, alienated, shooting each other on freeways, etc. Um, we, we got Putnam's data, we reanalyzed it, and we found he's right for most things like unions and others. He's wrong for the arts. Education, arts, music, or cultural activities have tripled in the in the Netherlands and doubled more than double yeah roughly doubled in the US 
over, over uh, recent, you know, 20, 30 years. Here are more countries, same kind of pattern, not as strong as in the Netherlands and the U.S., but Sweden, Denmark, Canada, Belgium, Korea are, show similar, similar patterns. Um, this is not true in uh, China, Russia, um, uh, <coughs> and, and, and some other locations. For, and that's, but that's another, that's almost an, it's an, another book. In terms of getting to this conference themes, how about leisure and hospitality? Is this, that is implicit but not explicit most of the discussion so far is how much are we talking about a business cycle or a, or a general growth or a decline or is this a sector change? And what I, what I hear in a number of the presentations such as bars and restaurants versus hardware stores is a sectoral change. That is, and this, 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 is, this is the simplest data to illustrate the point, that the hospitality and leisure sector from the U.S. US census from 1939 onward has been in continual growth. Was there in the Great Depression of 2008 a serious decline? Barely a blip. So this is not related to business cycle stuff. This is a, this is a change in the salience of the sectors which are driving the U.S. economy, and this is not just the U.S. This is going on around the, around the world, as we've heard in several papers. We, we discussed this for um, <coughs> about eight years, mostly with Asians, because some of these patterns seem to work in Europe, but they fell apart in Asia. And what was different about Asia, the Asian cities, and how these things worked? And so I'll simply say that, that this book basically starts with, with, with the participation model of Tuckville and shows it fails in Asia. The Jane Jacobs innovation, Bohemia innovation ideas, um, Schumpeter of others, and show again it doesn't work in Asia. But third, the arts. If we add the arts and look at some aesthetic transformations, we can bring Asia in in ways that the Asians can be compared with the others, and it gives us more insight. So, so just in, um, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll elaborate that a little bit, but we, we, um, it, it, there's, a, it, there's a book on it. <laughs> the, the, uh, we're adding, we're adding the, the other thing we're adding here in part is the explicit focus on a cultural scene. In addition to residential neighborhoods, industrial clusters, or political arenas, and, and, the, and, the, and the scene here contrasts with the others by adding buzz, I guess I'm supposed to, supposed to stay over here. Uh, <laughs> buzz in contrast to trust or money or power, and it's driven by consumers through amenities, through lifestyle sensibilities, and these are expressing and communicating feelings, experience, and moods through aesthetics. So aesthetics, if you will, is a, is a critical addition to people's repertoires in that this drives more their decisions. Um, okay. Looking at dramatic structures and transformation. So one of our, a lot, a lot, of, a lot of work done in interpreting this. Uh, three years, as I said, consulting with City of Paris. This is basically the downtown part of Paris for the maps I'm going to show you. The others are the, are, are, are the greater, greater Paris. How much are the scenes driven by income or, or uh, either rent or, or uh, you know, this is... Uh, uh, Salary. Okay. This, this, so this, this is income. So these are the, the dark green of the more affluent um, areas. And here's, here's the number of amenities. So we have about these individual amenities are things like churches, hardware stores, cafes, etc. We have, we have more of these in the green. That is, the red is not explained by the green. That is, we have more amenities even though we may have similar or less income. So it is not simply income driven. Glamour overlaps with income the most strongly of the 15 in Paris. So you can see the, you can see the, the overlap in simple terms. Uh, however, if we look at this internationally, in contrast Canada, Spain, and, 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 and Seoul, then um, Glamour is negatively associated with income in Seoul. So glamour, so it's not as if income is always a driver in the same way around the world. So this is the beginning of an alert. 
don't, you know, don't assume that what we think is, is working everywhere, in, in fact, is. Uh, exhibitionism and charisma I'll talk about in a minute or two, but the point here is that we can have some big differences. Spain, by contrast, is more driven by income, by rent. That is, this is these are simple Pearson correlation cor cor correlation coefficients. So this is still 0.5 correlation. Square that, that's 25% of the variance is explained by income. 75% is not explained by income. Even, even in, in, in Spain, in the U.S. or Canada, uh, income explains almost nothing. Okay. These are, these are the, all the 15 dimensions, just showing the same. Just look at, at all. Spain is a high, the, other, the others are low. Um, other specific dimensions, egalitarianism is strongest in the old red belt, the, the communist uh, areas of greater Paris. The Bobos are in new areas as well, but they are not in the, that is, the, 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 the terms of the gentrification theme, the rich people are not the yuppies, and nor are they the bobos. These are differentiated quite strongly in, in Paris and in other, other neighborhoods around the world. Uh, okay, I'll pass on. Okay, how are we doing this? I got a little bit on, I'm sorry, how, 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 the, how things work. These, 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 so we have three main sources in the, in the black book. We, we've used 20 or plus others, but the three main things in, in, in the, for, the, for the U.S. and Canada are... BizZip, <coughs> the um, um, uh, census, the yellow pages, and this is the yellow pages, and the third is the, is the DDB surveys of citizens to, to, to cross-validate these with each other. So these, these, these show basically, for instance, so just one I like to point out is what's different about this city. We have 763 Catholic churches. New York has 342. L.A. County has 225. That's a major distinctive characteristic of Chicago that explains a whole lot of, of the rest. But these are the kinds of raw data that we're, that we're starting with, which are more fine-grained than, than the census. We then, if we then look at the, so these are the, these are the largest numbers. What are the, in, for the whole US, which are, which are the most common activities? And these include both retail, but they also include civic and social organizations. Um, which are included in the census of business. They have data, they collect data on human rights organizations, on environmental organizations, and churches. Don't throw them out or ignore them. They, they, they collect. Tattoo parlors help interpret Bohemia, which helps explain where do you go for your coffee, etc. cetera. So, so these, are how, these are examples of some of the retail that link with the specific scenes dimensions, just to give you flavor of the kinds of things that, that we can classify from high to from very simple five point scale. These are not, this is not fancy to classify most of these kinds of things. Ethnicity is measured by Armenian restaurants. Okay, that's not a hard coding decision. Uh, okay, um, indicators I'm passing over. Okay, these, these differ in the three biggest cities. There are distinct interesting differences between the three the, the one I've talked about, which is not time to elaborate, but L.A. is glamorous. And the folks, most of the, every, every presentation I made in L.A., everybody said, that, that's just the film industry. People don't dress like that at home or on the weekend. I looked up the number of children's designer clothing stores in L.A. New York, like this, Chicago. Okay. There are big cultural differences. Okay. Um, neighborliness and, neighborliness and self-expression, important drivers of many other things, just showing that they're concentrated also by neighborhood. Um, not just race and income, but, but lifestyle. And so to take one of these, charisma, we then correlate with, the, with, these, with these other things. In Chicago, Charismatic char neighborliness is charismatic, which the mayor, which the, sorry, the, the alderman talked about explicitly last night. Chicago's a city of neighborhoods. And if you're neighborly and you deal with your neighborhood, that makes you a legitimate leader in Chicago, a charismatic leader in ways that is not true in, in New York or LA. Uh, glamour, by contrast, Chicago is not. Chicago does not see glamour as charismatic. LA and New York. Much more so. Okay. 
uh, Chicago is less rewarding of self-expressive activities in similar manner. Okay, um, now the types of analysis, you know, just, we, we, we don't have time to go into, into let, let, me, let me just go through quickly, let you look at a couple of pictures, you get a flavor of the analysis that's there, but I don't really have time to explicate this stuff. But we're analyzing for how glamour and self-expression explain entertainment patterns, high-tech pat no, patents, other patents, change in jobs, change in population, change in income, change in rent, change in college graduates, change in postgraduates. These are the same dependent variables we're using that everybody else has been using in a lot of discussion because we wanted to show that our scenes measures in a multiple regression of mixed methods above and beyond 10 or 15 other variables adds value. Okay. Um, quickly on gentrification and egalitarianism, what is what activities are more are, are strongly related to with Gini coefficients or, le, or, or, or left or, or more equally distributed? New Age religion, new new conservative religion, evangelical, martial arts, and pop culture are four critical kinds of things which share in that they're, they are highly related to racial diversity and, and change in racial diversity. These, these are the opposite of yoga. Yoga is highly, yoga is a, an upper status kind of activity and it, it does, does not attract African Americans, although it's now starting to with the Astor Gates and others. Uh, and, and, but, but, but traditionally, these kinds of retail the meaning of these is hugely important, and we're not explicitly discussing them, and I'm, I'm suggesting we try to do so. Rather than necessarily saying what's good or bad in general, what do people who are higher in income or lower in income express in, in their behaviors of supporting different kinds of institutions, and here's some answers. Okay, then almost just to show that one political commentary, these are pres US presidential elections. How much do they correlate with our 15 scenes dimensions? In 1996, the correlations were only about 0.1, positively or negative, between the, between the Democrats and the Republicans. <laughs> um, in in 2020, and Trump, so, you know, so, so Trump, 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 Trump is here. Okay, so basically, these things have gotten stronger and stronger. These are not just our preferences. People are voting, that is, they're making... They're moving and they're leaving neighborhoods based on these characteristics, and this is electing. We have a paper on Trump, and, and the, there's not one base. There are multiple distinct bases for different Trump support, but they're different from uh, the Democrat uh, Democratic background. Okay, so this shows the overlap, growing overlap between scenes and politics from 1996 to 2012. This is a, a huge increase in salience. Okay, I. Uh, just flipping through, coding, neighborhoods effects, neighborhood effects. How do we analyze Bohemia? Bobo voting. Uh, how much it, what drives job growth? Arts are number one, education is number two. Insignificant, crime, cost of living, county population side, and our scenes measures are significant. So this is archetypical of many of our analyses. How do we explain these kinds of things? We use the standard measures, more, more high-tech jobs. We add self-expression, and we find that together these explain a whole lot more. Okay, Silicon Valley over Boston, which declined. Uh, social movements, and last, I'll, I'll just end, end with this. <coughs> um, the, 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 um, uh, no, I, 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 sorry about this, not time to do that. These are some of our books circulating, scenescapes, and I will stop there. Okay. Thank you, folks.